Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Year-end giving reminder. Special tax deduction help most people give up to $600 to charity even if they don't itemize. IR 2021-214, November 3rd, 2021, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded taxpayers that a special tax provision will allow more Americans to easily de deduct up to $600 in donations to qualifying charities on their 2021 federal income tax return. So let me give my quick kind of recap on these itemized deductions, standard deductions, and the deductibility of them and what could possibly we might be seeing with regards to the itemized and standard deductions. Note that in the past, most of the deductions that were kind of like unusual deductions, deductions that aren't like natural to an income tax, in other words, natural deductions for an income tax would be deductions that were things that you needed in order to generate the income. So that's why a business deduction on, say, a Schedule C, it makes sense because you can't tax someone on the top line what they earned. If they had to spend a lot of money in order to get what they earned, the expenses, those would be natural deductions for an income tax because it's, it makes sense to tax the net income and not the gross income. But then, of course, there's all these other kind of things that are kind of nice. You kind of say, yeah, that, may, that seems like it'd be a good thing you know, for, you know, for other reasons and whatnot, other than it being a natural income tax deduction for us to want to deduct things like mortgage interest, things like uh, charitable deductions and so on. And it used to be that they would pack those things into the itemized deductions. The idea there being that you take the standard deduction if you don't have these other kinds of things to be adding up and the standard deduction will be easy. And then if you have these other things that we kind of like to pack in there, then you'll only need to deal with those if they're itemized, if you itemize, because of course, as we add these things to the code, it will complicate the code and so on. And it'll, be, it'll make certain people winners and losers and whatnot, depending on the different things that are included. Obviously, you could see why they would want to incentivize charitable contributions, however. And, and then, of course, two years ago, they increased the, the standard deduction in an attempt in part to simplify the code and in part to simplify the code to reduce the kind of itemized deductions that people would be taking so that more people would just take the standard deduction, which would make this tax code easier. But now, of course, at this point in time, you can see what would happen if the itemized deductions are less relevant and we still kind of like those things and, and that you can't take them on the itemized side as much. They start to creep over into other areas of the tax code. And that's kind of what we're seeing now. So that Charitable deductions is the first one or one of the first kind of itemized deductions that are kind of moving over to other areas of the code because we kind of like them, even though they complicate things and, they, and they're all stuffed in the itemized deduction. So that's the general, the general background here. So in any case, now there's kind of two places where you could take the, the, the charitable con deduction contribution, whether you, one for if you take, if are standardized and one if you're taking the itemized. Okay. Ordinarily, people who choose to take the standard deduction cannot claim a deduction for their charitable contributions, but a temporary law change now permits them to claim a limited deduction on their 2021 federal income tax returns for cash contributions made to qualifying charitable organizations. Nearly 9 in 10 taxpayers now take the standard deduction and, uh, and could potentially qualify. Under this provision, individual tax filers, including married individuals filing separate returns, can claim a deduction up to $300 for cash contributions made to qualifying charities during 2021. Maximum deduction is increased to $600 for married individuals filing joint returns. Included in the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities, the CARES Act, enacted March 20, 2020, a more limited version of this temporary tax benefit originally only applied to tax year 2020. The Taxpayers' Certainty and Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2020, enacted last December, generally extended it through the end of 2021. Cash contributions include those made by check, credit card, or debit card, as well as amounts incurred by an individual for unreimbursed out-of-pocket expenses in connection with their volunteer services to a qualifying charitable organization. Cash contributions don't include the value of volunteer services, securities, household items, or other property. So note, it's a little bit more restricted. We're talking mainly cash contributions with this deduction as opposed to if you have the itemized deductions you have a bit wider of a range possibly being able to make contributions such as 
goods and, and so on. So it's a little bit more limited outside at this point in time of the itemized deductions if you are taking the standard deduction and still want to deduct some form of charitable contributions. The IRS reminds taxpayers to make sure they're donating to a recognized charity. So clearly you do want to think about the charity you're giving to. Obviously the taxes in, in and of themselves shouldn't be the main driving factor normally you would think, but it's nice to get a tax deduction. But it is nice that they kind of the taxes help you to determine if a charity qualifies as a charitable organization, which at least has some hurdles to qualify for a charitable organization. So, you know, it's, you know, it's not a complete scam. They at least, you know, filled out the paperwork to do, to do the qualified charity. But that's not the only check. They could still be fairly inefficient in terms of getting the money to do what you want them to do. I mean, just look at the government itself, right? The, the, the not-for-profits can be somewhat bloated. So what you'd like to do is then go in a little bit further just because they qualify for a not-for-profit doesn't mean that they're running efficiently and actually getting the money to do things that are you know most helpful. So, so then you'd want to check a little bit further generally and see, see how good they are at doing, doing it, what it is they do. And just like you would for a business, they don't have the same kind of market pressure, in other words, that a business does to get the money to the end product, the users, because the users are not customers, they're going to be people they're giving for charity, and the people giving money are not expecting a return, they just are given to charity, and therefore you don't have that double check. That's why these not-for-profits and government entities tend to get bloated quite easily, and, and so you've got to put a little bit of pressure on them when you do the donations, might you know, get the money going a little further. So in any case, to receive a deduction, taxpayers must donate to a qualified charity. To check the status of a charity, they can use the IRS tax-exempt organization search tool. There's a link to that here. Cash contributions to most charitable organizations qualify, but contributions made either to supporting organizations or to establish or maintain a donor-advised fund do not. Contributions carried forward from prior years did not qualify, nor contributions to most private foundations and most cash contributions to charitable remainder trusts. So note, you, you got this carry forward kind of notion, meaning like if you're talking about the itemized deductions and you were restricted on the deductions that you could take, even though you gave to charity, the question is, well, can I roll them forward to the next year? And that, that kind of roll forward uh, option isn't really there if you're not itemizing on the standard deduction, they're just giving that up to 600 kind of deduction. That's it. Simple. You know, there it is. So in general, a donor advised fund is a fund or account maintained by a charity in which a donor can, because of being a donor, advise the fund on how to distribute or invest amounts contributed to the donor and held in the fund. So if you put money into a fund, and this is kind of where it gets tricky when you got these different funds and, and uh, things that are managed by trusts and whatnot. And you're saying the, the, thing, the goal often when people put money into these types of things is to, to pretend they gave the money away. But if you still have control over where the money goes and how it's used, you didn't really, you didn't really donate anything because you still have control over where the money goes, right? So that's kind, of, that's kind of a problem to get the deduction for giving the money for someone else to control to charity. Okay, so supporting organization is a charity that carries out its exempt purpose by supporting other exempt organizations, usually other public charities. Keep good records. Special record keeping rules apply to any taxpayer claiming a charitable contribution deduction. Usually this includes obtaining an acknowledgement letter from the charity before filing a return and retaining a canceled check or credit card receipt for contributions of cash. So when you make your charitable contributions, those are things that you want to track. You know, normally you don't want, you know, the IRS or the government tracking you because it seems kind of like, why are you, why are you following? It doesn't, that doesn't seem good. But when you want, you do, of course, want the audit trail when you give a deduction that you're going to be taking as a deduction, because that's going to be the proof that you actually gave the money to charity in the event that they were to audit you or something like that. For details on the record-keeping rules for substantiated gifts to charity, see publication 526 Charitable Contributions. There's a link to that here. It's available on irs.gov, the IRS website. Remind families about the child tax credit. Besides the special charitable contribution deduction, the IRS also encourages employers to help get the word out about advance payments of the child tax credit because they have direct access to many employees and individuals who receive this credit. In particular, 
remind low-income workers, especially those who don't normally file returns, that the deadline for signing, signing up for these payments is now November 15, 2021. More information on <clears throat> the advanced child tax credit is available on irs.gov. There's also a link to that here. For information about other coronavirus-related relief, visit irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. There's a link to that stuff here, and there'll be a link to this in the description.